just like and then don't touch anything else. Just log in. I'll give you guys a second to log in. So get on your classroom at Google.com and go to Mr. Conover's class. at the church the following Sunday. Knots of gazers and gossips were collected in the churchyard at the bridge and at the spot where the hat and the pumpkin had been found. The stories of Brower of Bones, a whole store of others, were called to mind, and when they had diligently considered them all and compared them with the symptoms of the present case, they shook their heads and came to the conclusion that Ichabod had been carried off by the galloping Hessian. As he was a bachelor and in nobody's debt, Nobody troubled his head about, any, about him anymore. The school was removed to a different quarter of the hollow, and another pedagogy reigned in his steed. It is true, an old farmer who had been down to New York on a visit several years after, and from whom this account of the ghostly adventure was received, brought home word that Ichabod Crane was still alive, and that he had left the neighborhood, partly through fear of the goblet and partly in mortification at having been suddenly dismissed by the heiress. Brom Bones, too, was shortly after his rival's disappearance, conducted the blooming Katrina in triumph to the altar, was observed to look exceedingly knowing whenever the story of Ichabod was related, and always burst into a hearty laugh at the mention of the pumpkin, which led some to suspect that he knew more about the matter than he chose to tell. The old country wives, however, who are the best judges of these matters, maintain to this day that Ichabod was spirited away by supernatural means. The bridge became more than ever an object of superstitions and awe. The schoolhouse, being deserted, soon fell to decay and was reported to be haunted by the ghost of the unfortunate pedagogy. And the plowboy, loitering homeward after a still summer evening, has often fancied his voice at a distance, chanting a melancholy song tune among the tranquil solitudes of Sleepy Hollow. So how did this story end? Katrina, who they were fighting over. Liz, were you going to say something? Oh, I was going to say people didn't know what happened, but they were suspecting that 
perfect. It ended with kind of this in-between ending. Is it a definite ending? Like, this is what happened? So what could we call that? How did it end? Zaya? Good. Very uncertain ending. Liz? Um, well, I'm going to say um, not solutional. Okay, there, there was no resolution. If we want to use one of our um, terms. No denouement. No denouement. Good. We're using all of our literary terms. Good job, guys. But what can we use? I like to call this ending, it's just a bunch of predictions. That's the word I like to use, predictions. Is a prediction just a random guess? No. What is a prediction? I was going to say it's a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger. Awesome. Liz? When you, use, oh, when you use clues to um, make it into clues. And what's another word for clues in a story? Oh, signs, clues. What's a literary term that could lead us to a prediction? There's a bunch of it in this story. Oh. Foreshadowing. There's so much foreshadowing in this story. And we've gone through it when we've earlier in this week. We've seen so many foreshadowings. Name one big sign that could lead you to this ending. Some of these predictions. Liz again? Um, the pumpkin on the ground. The pumpkin on the ground. That might lead you to the idea that maybe something bad happened to Ichabod. Right? The trampled saddle. The trampled saddle. It looks like maybe someone, there was a struggle. Go ahead. Um, when he left the, like, the party. And he said, oh. Awesome. How did he leave the party? Did he go home happy that night? Kind of. Wait. Okay. Yeah. What happened at the party, though? There was, there was a conflict at the party. Right? Yes, Brahm and Ichabod have been fighting over the same girl this whole time, so there's a lot of tension and a lot of foreshadowing. Liz? I was going to say, like, in some movies, like, when there's, like, no really, no resolution, there's, like, a sign of them left or something that, like, represents them, like, his path. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we see that left in the dirt. So this ended with a bunch of predictions. That's how the story ended, okay? But the predictions that the housewives made and all of these things, and then do you think it's kind of funny how every time Ichabod's brought up, Brom Bones acts a little weird, like he knows something? So that, that kind of could spark your interest a little bit. So it ended with just a bunch of predictions. There's no definite ending. An open ending. So when there's an open ending, that leaves a lot of room for work to be done by students like us, right? So I went ahead and I created my own ending to what I thought this story was. But I didn't just create an ending. Mr. Conover, Mr. Conover and I didn't just sit down and randomly come up with an ending that didn't really make sense. I went through the text, I studied the foreshadowing, I really thought, what do I think happened, right? So I really went back into the text, looked at the foreshadowing, and that's going to be part of your assignment of what I want you guys to do today. So what do you remember about the ending of the story? What are some predictions that you had of what happened to Ichabod Crane? All of your endings are going to be different. So you don't need to all have the same ending. We don't need to come to the same thing. I want you to be really creative, but at the same time, I want you to be critical because I want you to use literary terms. I want you to look for irony and foreshadowing and what was the climax. Really use um, literary terms when you do this assignment. So before we get started, I'm going to show you what I did. I'll show you my models of it. But these are your two tasks. Today we're doing two things before the end of class. Um, to help you guys to come up with your endings, I pulled out some really important passages from the story that are filled with literary elements. They're filled with hints here and there and all these little things. And I want you to comment them in your Google Classroom. So that's why I had you log on to Google Classroom. You'll see an assignment called Important um, Passages to Comment. So you can go ahead and open that now, but just leave it alone after you open it. And then after we comment our important passages, you can work in pairs to um, collaborate your ideas. And I want you to come up with your creative ending using those important passages. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here's mine. So this is the 
one I did. I took out these passages because I thought they were really important. So this one, you guys will recognize, this was the first paragraph from the story. And then these are just other important ones. And over here, I commented. So you highlight where you want, go up to the top, press comment, and then press another button that will say comment, and it lets you comment next to the paragraph, okay? And your comments will stay there. They're automatically saved. So for the opening scene, it's talking about, it introduces you to the land of Sleepy Hollow. So I highlighted it, and I said that's imagery. It's setting up the mood of the story. Does everyone see what I did? And then this one is really important. It says Ichabod Crane had a soft and foolish heart. So I highlighted that. That's characterization. That's important to his character, right? Because he falls for Katrina, and that's when things start to kind of go downhill for him, right? So I went ahead and I did that for all of the paragraphs, and that's what I'm going to ask you guys to do. Each comment that you do doesn't necessarily have to be a literary term. Like, it doesn't have to say irony. Maybe you just see something that's super important. Like, over here, I highlighted all about Brom Bones, and I did use a term. I said he's the antagonist. But I just kind of talked about why this description of Brom Bones is important. Okay, do you guys understand? Does anyone have any questions just about commenting the passages? So then after you're done commenting all of the passages, I want at least eight comments between the pairs. So you could at least come up with four each. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, this is where you're going to come up with your own ending. And I won't read my entire own ending because I want you guys to have time to work on this. But this was my ending, and I'll leave it up on the board.